Looks like the recording's working. Looks like the video's working. Looks like the sound is working. Let's pray for charts. <laughs> but so far, so good, right? So it is a Monday. It's early morning. Uh, I think it's what the, I don't know. It doesn't have a date. Um, I don't know what the date is. What is it? The 11th? 12th. 12-12, 2016. Otherwise known as final examinations today at school. Mm -hmm. Got to go, man. Got to go. So it's a big day. Um, down there is MIT. Harvard is uh, over there about a mile or two. So I got to head over there. I don't know. It's the only place I can get. So I'm stuck in the middle of MIT. So without further ado, uh, I don't think I'm going to do the... Uh, fundies today just because I'm on my laptop and uh, I got to pull up websites and it's complicated and difficult so why don't we just do some technical analysis today and uh, I can answer any questions that you have I don't know if it'll be a full webinar but every time I say that it seems to go over uh, over normal length so I don't know we'll do what we can today all right is that all right we'll do our best to survive um, also I'm gonna be in the Caribbean tomorrow <laughs> i know <clears throat> i know i know i mean i don't know someone's got to do it right so i'm not going to be here tomorrow for tuesdays because i'm actually on a plane so i'm going to be at campus until like 10 o'clock tonight I'm going to zip over here consume about 27 beers after my final sleep two or two and a half to three hours and then get on a plane and fly to the caribbean and while i'm on on the plane that's that's when we do our normal webinar so I'm not going to be able to do that, um, but on Wednesday I'll do the webinar from, I'll be in uh, St. Martin, right, St. Martin, and then Thursday I'll probably be in St. Kitts, Friday I'll be in Nevis, um, I don't know, busy. Uh, oh, and on Friday I'm doing a special event at Epic Street, I don't know if anybody knows yet, uh, I don't know. I don't know if anybody knows it, but there's a huge event going on on Friday. I'm going to try to do that, but I have to squeeze in between meetings with the government and the central bank and I'm like, hey. So so here's a funny story. It's snowing outside. It's snowing outside. I have one sweater. I have a jacket and a scarf. <laughs> because tomorrow I'm going to be running around in my yellow Speedos. Yeah, with a big maple leaf right on the front, right? Big Canadian maple leaf. So anyways, uh, complicated life, very difficult, but life is great, life is grand, life is good, life is beautiful. So let's get going. By the way, I haven't slept much again. Still, never get to sleep. So, hey, 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 welcome to Forex. Today, good to have you. Let me remind you that trading is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money. You cannot afford to lose. Hi, my name is Wayne. I'm a currency trader. Glad to be here. Um, it was a good weekend. No, caught some yens on Friday. We'll keep going today uh added on to a few took profit on some others <laughs> nice right so i'm here to share my years and years and years of experience uh with you and life as a trader is very interesting because you trade when you travel like i'm doing now you trade through earthquakes hurricanes um tsunamis terrorist attacks <laughs> i mean just you end up trading through all these things and so i i have all those experiences uh, good and bad, right? And uh, my goal is to make you a better trader. Uh, I'm like your best friend and your mentor, um, all in one. But I am a, working for a broker, right? So what's the big thing here? What's the big business plan, huh? The big business plan is if I can make you success by giving you skills and sharing my years of experience, maybe you'll become a, a success sooner. But more importantly, I think, is that you become a success consistently and grow your account over uh, time and your lot size will grow over time and over time it'll be a successful business uh, business partnership between traders way I mean their income will go up over time and your profit will go up over time and if I can be someone that's in the middle helping then I'm ha I'm happy to do that so that's why I'm here 
every single morning, 7.30 a.m., Monday through Thursday at forex.today. And every Friday, I'm over at FX Street. So I'll see you over there. FX Street's for premium members only. Like I said, there's probably going to be a big special event after that Friday event. Um, and I'll, yeah, I'm going to do my best to squeeze it in while I'm on the road, yo. Maybe I'll wear my uh, yellow Speedos with the big maple leaf on the front. I think that'll be hot. So let's do the time warp again. I think if I do this. Oops. Whoa, whoa. Come on, Windows. Oh, man, Windows is crazy. Dang. Okay. Uh, oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. Boom. All right. There we are. This is where I left it. I think the last time we looked at these charts, Africa. So I think I can see the chat. I think you can see the charts. Is everything okay? Give me a thumbs up. 100%. Number one price for you. Real genuine, real genuine counterfeit Rolex. Same, same, bet number one price. Yeah, all right, good, thumbs up. Real genuine fake Rolexes. Genuine fake Rolexes, number one price for you. Same, same. All right, good. So we're here and, whoa, dang, girl, I need, I need some, uh, Hang on, I need my glasses. No, I'm not getting old. What what else is an ex supermodel supposed to do? Male models don't get, you know, retirement benefits. There we go. Is that good? I think I can see you. All right. So there we go, five minute over here. Let's change that to the 15. So one of the things I was watching on uh, Thursday and then on Friday was the potential for oil to move up based on the big uh, the big deal, right? Remember that, how they're gonna have this big deal? No, 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 I'm in a hotel in Boston. That's uh, Cambridge, actually, technically speaking. That's Cambridge and MIT. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so anyways, remember that big deal, like OPEC was going to do something? Now, remember my theory was on the short run, uh, oil prices would go up, Canadian dollar would benefit, but on the long run, it's all full of nonsense. Based on game theory, there's no, no way, just no way they're going to be able to carry it up. That's my thought. That's my plan. So last week, uh, buying some Canadian dollar, and uh, I don't know how long it's going to last. I think a lot of people are going to wake up and say, man, there's no way. But look at the hourly chart, right? I think you can see my mouse. As long as we're, you know, we're, we're, we're cruising below the 21 on the hour, it's all good, right? No, it, it's... It's a uh, not prisoner dilemma. Um, but, 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 which one is it? Um, it's just that the the way that this you know a cartel, what's it called? The way that a cartel is designed is that inevitably everyone is incentivized to cheat. Okay, and without like sort of a hegemonic power in control of the cartel. You know, like if you cheat, someone kills you, right? Like think of uh, the, the most famous cartel is the Medellin cartel, I think, of, right? Without Pablo Escobar willing to put a bullet in your brain if you cheat, you know, then, you know, like if you have someone like that, then you don't cheat, right? You're like, hey, man, let's sneak some of Pablo Escobar's cocaine out of here and sell it. We'll make some good money, right? <laughs> yeah, everyone you ever met just died when you make that decision, right? So you need like that hegemonic power to work to say, well, prices are high, and that's what a cartel wants, just make prices high. Prices are high, so everyone wants to cheat, like, because if you sell and everyone else isn't selling, 
you're going to make a lot of money, right? So you're incentivized to cheat. So you need someone to say, well, if you cheat, you die. You'll die, right? And you're like, okay, well, I don't want to, I don't want to die just because I made some profit, right? You know what I mean? So Saudi Arabia, for example, used to be that hegemonic power. They were the swing producer. They are no longer the swing producer. In fact, the United States is a swing producer. So there's no like hegemonic power in charge of OPEC, and that's why it's just not going to work. So they they did the art, their little deal. I'm trying to fit this in there. They did their little deal. Oil prices are going to go up, and who's going to cheat? Which OPEC member is going to cheat? If there's no one at the table with a gun, right? They're all going to cheat, right? There you go. They're all they're all going to equally and justly and fairly cheat each other, right? So it ain't going to work, son. That's all. It ain't going to work. It's just, and it's the way that the game is designed. There's no referee. Like, there's not even a rule. Like, all right, everyone say they don't, you know, but anyways, whatever. You get it. Yeah, they're all going to cheat, right? Right? So that's that. But it is part of game theory. And, and uh, I did study it in actually the class I'm taking a final for. We did one chapter in game theory, and there's like three or four different games that we studied. So this one's in uh, international political economic, um, uh, like trade negotiations and global economic, uh, uh, international trade class is basically what this is, right? So that that's part of these uh, political global negotiations. And I liked it, so I signed up for basically a math class. So next semester, it's a whole a whole class on game theory, which I think will be hopefully um, interesting, right? So anyway, so with all of that in mind, yeah, I'd love to like buy a bunch of oil and then dump it, right? So that's where I started. Um, I don't, all right, so now I'm a bull on US dollar, right? So I cannot, it's against Wayne's law, right? It's against Wayne's law to sell USD CAD. I just can't do it. So WWWD, what would Wayne do? CAD yen yen. Hallelujah. Yeah, oh, that's a weekly chart. Yeah, don't get all excited. That's a weekly chart, right? So this is the, the fifth of nine trades, I think, on this since then. Uh, how you, here we go. So, okay, so this is a trade I did, I think, late Friday. I had another one here and another one here and another one here. Um, but the, all on my other platform, this is just my travel platform. So but um, so that's where we are now. And as long as we're above this gray zone, I'm, I'm fine, right? In fact, if I was a cheeky monkey, I would be adding soon to yet another one, uh, the sixth, right? This, the, the sixth of 10 or something. You know what I mean? So that's kind of how I'm looking at it right now. Oscillator on the 15 looks fine. Check it out on an hour. Come down to the 21 and keep going, right? You guys get it? Maybe it'll overextend, but if you're a trend trader, there isn't there. You don't. Uh, if you're a hardcore trend trader, like like a turtle trader, they were just dumb. They would buy and then be stupid, and that's why they went out of business, right? When you're when you're dumb, you're dumb. In this case, if you're a trend trader, there, there there's no sort of uh, subjectivity to it. You know, like Miles says, oh, maybe a little overextended. Well, what that does is you start talking to yourself, right, Miles? And you're like, it can't go up any farther. It can't go up any farther. It can't go up any farther. And you start talking yourself out of your best trades, right? 
But what's the goal when you're on a winner? Let the winner run. And you're like, oh, the 2550 has increased a lot, blah, 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 blah. So how about this? You stay long until it stops making higher highs and higher lows. And that's that. There's no subjectivity to it. It's binary. As long as it's making higher highs and higher lows, you're fine. Makes a lower low, you know you're going to get on on the next rally. That's it. Done. I would expect it to revisit 21. Yeah, and that's what it's going to do. Right? But here's the thing, and here's what I'm looking at at this point, that it's going to come down on my yellow zone and maybe pop up. And then, of course, over time, you know, five hours from now, this moving average will have risen up to the yellow zone. Go up. So one way to kind of play it is it's already on the 21 right now. You can't see it because I'm there it is, see? I'm on I'm ahead of the curve. Right? The moving average is a laggard. I'm a revolutionary, brother. Nita, so it gapped well. Hallelujah. Okay, so it will keep going up until it stops going up. It'll go up. Forever and ever and ever and ever until it stops. And then I'll get up. That's the idea. Now, of course, we know I'm worried about it being top heavy, but whatever. It's, it's only money. It's only money. Gap not filled. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Oh, all right. All right. All right. Look, let's talk about this. Because some people are really, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Well, first of all, let me mark what did happen. It gapped up and came all the way down here, okay? And this is the, okay, let me get in there now. It's even closer. All right, now let me zoom in from hour to 15 minutes. So you're saying because we didn't get the three pips here that the gap didn't fill? That's it? So now you're planning on it coming all the way back down to, to capture those three pips? Don't be like that. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. And first of all, a gap fill should technically happen in the first hour or two. Some people very often say, well, you know, on Tuesday afternoon, it's coming back to fill the gap. You're like, no, dude, no, come on. If it does, it's a coincidence. No, a gap fill is a short-term, short thing. I mean, it's a short, it's a little thing. It's, it's not going to happen on a Thursday and that kind of stuff. And sometimes it gaps and it never comes back. I mean, it, it's a rule of thumb, okay? Like if you were short going into the weekend and it popped up, what you should say to yourself, well, it's going to try to fill the gap, and i got to reduce my losses as much as possible by staying calm. If it keeps making highs, i gotta, I just got to take the loss. But if I stay calm, I have a good chance to get most of my money back. And you could have sat here for about 15 or 20 minutes and, and got, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's a 99% filled gap. I mean, what, what were you hoping for, right? Okay. So anyways, I think we filled that gap. That's fine. Okay. And it came up, roll reversed. When it came up, should roll reverse again. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't get too caught up in the rules of thumb, guys. You got to you got to be fluid. Okay. 
That's why I, I don't give you like prices. I give you zones like, all right, this would be a role reversal zone. You could also see it's 8800. So anywhere around 88, including 8780 is fair game. Okay. It's just that is your buy zone. That's where bulls would consider buying. Like what kind of idiot would sell here? There may be enough idiots, but probably not. Okay. You know, no one really should sell this unless it does something like this. Okay. Then, if you want to be a bear, by all means, right? By all means, do what you got to do. And at that point, I'd probably take my profit. To say, oh, well, forget that, right? So if you're a bear, that's but like selling this now, you're just mentally deranged. Not you're not a bear, you're crazy <laughs> or sloppy or something, right? Hey, are you a bull or a bear? No, nah, I'm just sloppy. <laughs> Always have been. Right? I wake up in the morning and there's like dirty clothes and pips laying all over the floor and I just never I never pick them up <laughs> oh not, not pigs pips <laughs> yeah but anyways yeah yeah slaughtered what's all this blood all over your house oh pigs it's a long story I'm a currency trader and I can't make decisions yeah so it's like a slaughterhouse in here <laughs> Yeah, what happened to your leg? Oh, I had to cut it off. I got really sloppy on a trade. <laughs> I got slaughtered on a trade. It was a killer. It was a killer. So anyways, uh, so that's how you think. Like, look, is it bullish? Yeah, it's bullish. How do you know? Um, prices moving up, our highs, our lows. Okay, how about this 55 on the 15 minute? You're like, oh, boy, I'm a little worried about this 55. Well, it's still not saying down. What it's saying is double top right the other thing is probably happening is um, a longer term bull meaning someone looking at a higher time frame probably has something like this and what they want is double top three wave correction down and then long bomb it again off 87.50 could be a rabbit could be okay Yeah, well, yeah, try again, right? Yeah, but they, they call that profit taking, right? Uh, whatever. So that's just the whatever CAD. You are not alone. All right. Uh, yeah. So there's my oil. Let me clean it up for you. So there's my oil, right? Look at that. That's how I made my first million, right? Boom! Amazing that they came and did a deal, huh? Isn't that amazing? They got together, they did a deal. Oh, wait, we talked about it two weeks ago. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah, now it makes sense. You are not alone. I am here with you. Is that amazing? So the world freaks out information about a deal comes out the world just goes redonkulous over this super amazing surprising deal check that out what's your qualified I don't have it I don't have opinions on Trump 
I don't I don't care. As far as I'm concerned, I'm I'm the king of the world. Trump, who's Trump? Call it, right? Hold on, my head. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. So, I think uh, you know. I think the world has gone completely tabloid, and that uh, it desperately lacks culture and intellect. So, I, honestly, I don't. I don't watch TV. I don't even have a TV. I don't. E I don't even have a Facebook account except for the ones that trades get put on. But I don't. I don't have a personal account. I just. I really don't. My problem is I just don't care. You know what I care about? Trading and you. That's it. Trading and you. I love to trade and I love you. Everything else, you know, I mean, you, including family and children. I mean, obviously, I love all that. And then there's nothing else. I mean, I don't. That's it. I'm, you know, I go to. I go to like parties, Christmas parties in my neighborhood and I meet like the other dudes and they're like, Hey man, do you golf? Are you getting out and golfing? I'm like, no, I don't golf. I make money. What the hell do you do? Oh, well, you know, I golf once a week. I golf at least once a week. Yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have a job. Yeah. You have a job, bro. You can work and then have a whole day off. I don't get the days off. What the hell are you talking about, bro? Golf. What's wrong with you? Golf when I'm 75. Okay? All right. Yeah, feelings, right? <laughs> so it's... I'm grumpy like that, huh? I'm like, no, no, I don't live a regular life. I'm glad you get to golf once a week. Keeps you sane, makes keeps you off the ledge of the bridge. That's cool. You should get a big, bigger TV, make you feel better, better about yourself, right? So, uh, what I'm talking about here is that with the world freaking out on an oil deal, Look what actually happens. Isn't that like, so let, let's ask the obvious question, but remember, I'm, I'm programming your brain. Do professional and institutional oil traders, do they use monthly pivot points? Miles is such a hedger. Come on, Miles. Commit, Miles. <laughs> yeah, maybe it could be. It certainly looks like it might be. But <laughs> come on, you commit, Miles. Yes. Without a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> yeah, I got to get a t shirt. That says less for longer. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I just, can't, I don't understand. I mean, I really don't. I'm like, I just don't get it. Right? Oh, and I'll have another one that says print money, raise taxes. Like, well, what does that accomplish? So, so anyways, going back to this, okay, look at the look at Friday's close, by the way, a monthly pivot, and look at like on the shocking, ridiculous news, boom, the market opens up and hits the monthly R2 and stops. Great, huh? Even double tops. So you know for a fact 122% miles. 122% chance that institutional and professional investors that trade oil, WTI, use monthly pivots. So, based on my deep, 
deep analysis and research here at MIT. This is MIT research. You can't argue that. Based on my deep MIT re research, right? Institutional traders that trade oil use monthly pivot points. What are you going to do now when you trade oil? Hmm? What are you going to do? You're going to use specifically monthly pivot points, right? Weekly and monthly pivot points, yeah. But you for sure have to include the monthly because this is all I'm showing you here now, right? And you must you must say to yourself that you almost feel sorry for those traders that trade oil that don't have monthly pivots. Like they just don't know. And that means they're vulnerable for you to, you know, zero sum them back to poverty. Right? When all your friends walk into your new house, like, wow, what is it that you do to earn all of this? Well, well, I took it from an oil trader. <laughs> That's it. I, he moved out. He couldn't afford it. I moved in. It's great. An oil trader gave it to me because he didn't have monthly pivots. Not my fault. It's nice. Come check out the seller. Awesome. Right? So there's that. Glorious stuff, though, isn't it? Hallelujah. So, like, look down here. Last week. Or, sorry, last month. Do you think... Traders knew there was a green zone here that said that's the projected monthly bottom. Do you think they knew that or do you think that it was a coincidence? I suppose it could be a random walk. I don't think so. And then check this out. This touch here, support. Touch here, look, to the, to the penny, support. It's the support pivot. Support one. Support one. There's the central. These are like key numbers, guys. Key numbers. Somebody said, oh, my God, I was able to get in at $45.15. Snap. Boom. Might have been waiting all day for that. Right? So this is why when you're jumping into your trades, guys, you're like, oh, look, boom, I'm in. Yay. Think about the other guy sitting there waiting for a day or two. To, and he's like, please come down to 45.15. Please come down to 45.15. Please come down to 45.15. Boom, I'm in. They were thinking about it days, not just minutes or seconds. Right? Seconds, minutes, hours, days, maybe a week. They're like, man, if it comes down to 45.15, that's. That's when I'm in. I'm getting in at the monthly S1. I'm long and strong on this. You see what I mean? Yeah, I, I don't know anything about those other pivots, and I think they're just ways to sell you books and DVDs. Why the hell would you need different pivots? Remember, technical analysis is a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? So the more you kind of monkey it up to, to ha have bells and whistles, the less likely it's going to work. You, don't, you want simple. You want what everybody else has. Because you're not trying to beat the market. You're trying to understand what the market's going to do. So then you could just beat it. You don't need better tools. You need the same tools and an understanding of what they're likely to do. But anyways... Well, as far as I'm concerned, Miles, right, all you need to know is what I teach you. I mean, you can add more to it. Everything else isn't wrong. 
but I've been doing this for so long using these exact tools that I don't know why you need more. In fact, I keep reducing. Like, I used to have MACD on here, but then look, just look at it. You don't need a MACD. Just look at your charts. Look. I, I just look at the 2155. Look, the MACD is above the water line, and, and it's rising. I mean, just look at it. Why, not, why do you need a MACD on the chart? Just understand what it is, and then you look at it, and I could draw a MACD all day, right? So you got to, like, simplify it. Once you know, add your MACD, observe. Like, you know, I spent, like, I, I, I'm not joking. I spent probably two or three years mustering MACD. Now I don't even need it on my chart because I could just see it. It's not that MACD is simple. It's that I spent two or three years doing incredible focus on MACD. And now I'm a master of it. I just, you know, it's not bragging or anything. It's just true. I, I spent the time. I'm, that's it. I got the PhD in MACD. That's it. MACD, PhD. That's it. So, accomplished, right? Now I don't need it on my chart because I can see it. I can calculate it with my brain. So even stochastics, not even really that important anymore to me because I can just see it. I mean, I just know it. I mean, so uh, great, great. So what you need is less tools, but an increase in understanding of what's happening both fundamentally and technically. Like all of this is nonsense if you didn't know what was happening with OPEC. And of course, I already have predictions for the future, which I already told you. Because remember, last month I told you it was going to go up specifically because of a deal. And I told you eventually that deal is going to collapse. They're all going to cheat. And oil prices are going to come right back down. So it's like, what do you need the chart for? Oh, well, the chart's really helpful to know when it rolls over and goes from bullish to bearish. Oh, good. Well, that's why we use these tools. Remember, there's no answers on your chart. You know what I mean? There's no answers here. It's just like, what do you want to do here, Wayne? I'm like, well, right now it's bullish, but, you know, I think in the next uh, next two months, it'll be heavily bearish again. Maybe sooner, maybe later. Don't know. Okay. And you can wait. You could sell this if you wanted to. I don't like selling it after a high. Right? So, yeah, so like you got here to here to here, right? So that's not quite a sell opportunity, but it, you know, maybe January, right? So like, a low, a lower low followed up by a lower high, right? Maybe, right? Oops, uh, view insert shapes, right? So let's say the next move, come on. Next move is like from here to, let's make a lower low, and then it's going to make a lower high to about here, okay? Maybe I'll short here at a retracement back to 52 or 53. Or maybe it's more like this, right? I don't think it'll happen this month, but maybe it will. Okay. And I would be selling up here, maybe. I don't know if, what this is, if this is a bat or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know those things. I just know a low lower than this low is going to produce a lower high, especially if I'm fundamentally bearish. You see what I mean? So it's the decision that makes you money. These yens are beautiful. Life is beautiful. You gotta give you all you got. Gonna get what you give. Uh, 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 uh. So... Let's say, uh, now I got water in my ear. Um, according to the analysis 
I've provided to you over the weeks and months. Am I a bull on gold or a bear? Bear on gold. Cool. All right. Great. Kodiak. Okay, good. So let's see how difficult it is to trade gold. Are you ready for this? See, over here, there was a, bear, a bullish move. The yellow zone here is where a bull would buy. The yellow zone is where the bull would buy. The yellow zone is where the bull would buy. And then, of course, it all collapsed. Okay. Several weeks ago, right? Looks probably the election, right? So back to the bear. Where, what zone do weekly swing traders sell? What zone do weekly swing traders sell according to the Wayne Meister? Uh, Dom, no, you are not correct. But what about Trump? What about Trump? <laughs> oh, my gosh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Weekly Central to WM3. All right, so let me get a click closer. Okay, this is gold. Here we go. This is your sell zone. This is your sell zone. And this is your sell zone. So how am I doing so far? This is the stuff put in a book eight years ago. It's not backfilling. Okay, and over here, during this bullish correction, that's the buy zone, just based on the book. Is it? Right? You know what I used to do? I used to always grab my book out of the closet when I was at home, and I'd, I'd put it on a, a silk pillow with golden tassels, and I'd bring it out. Me need all me need Sydney. Me need all me need Sydney. Me need all me need Sydney. Right? I bring it up. Consult the book of Forex. And you know, open up. Oh, pivot points. Chapter four. Page 122. Right? If thine is bullish on the gold. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. It's just, there it is. Like, once again, what I'm trying to tell you is if you just did a little bit of planning, just a little, it's not difficult. What you're doing is difficult. That, my friend, is easy. Would you agree? then why are you making it so difficult? You need to ask yourself this. You might need to sit down with your mother. I'm telling you. Like, Mom, I, I, I feel like I deserved more love and attention when I was a child. And I've spent my whole life trying to impress you. And I have taken everything simple and basic in life and made it extremely complicated in hopes that you would notice me and love me. I just want you to love me. <laughs> right? I mean, like, why is it so complicated? You're doing it for some reason, right? I'm your mentor, but you might need a therapist, son. <laughs> Right? we got to be realists here, right?
Yeah, your your mom says, "Great, leave a business card. I'll get back to you." <laughs> Good talk. Let's put that in a parking lot and revisit that some other time. <laughs> right? Because your needs are like a nine, and right now my giving's more like a two. So maybe early next year. Hit me up at the end of the quarter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, right? So, I mean, look how some of these are just, I mean, it's just ridiculous, straightforward, right? Like, you should be able, you should look at this and say, oh my God, I should be a gold trader. Right? That's, that's your, this, that's your, what your emotional response should be like, oh my God. I worked my butt off over the last three weeks and lost money. Maybe I should just be a gold trader. Well, that's not 100% what I'm saying. I'm saying maybe you should have a plan. I've asked you to specialize. If you're a gold trader and you were a bear, I think it's, it's impossible. It'd be unnatural for you to lose money on this, right? Like you would have to just go against the laws of nature, right? You'd, you'd have to like convince me that a, a boulder can roll uphill. I'm like, no, man, that doesn't make sense. You know, we got physics and the laws of nature, right? Like, no, a boulder doesn't roll up the hill. So, you know, it, you whatever you're doing wouldn't make sense. If you're simply a bear, you would have made money here. That's, I, I believe, I mean, there's nothing complicated here, right? So maybe... It's on your, in your planning retreat. How many people here have decided to have a year-end planning retreat so that you start 2017 on the right foot? With a new mindset, maybe a business plan, maybe pro forma cash flow statements. Right? Because that is something that we've talked about as well, isn't it? What time is it? 22. Right. Come on, come on, come on now, touch me, baby. Can't you see that I am not afraid? Mm. Screaming. Okay. So let's go all the way back. This is the buy zone according to weekly swing strategy. This is the buy zone. Didn't get it. It's too bad, so sad. Here it is. Okay. So not only do I give you your prices in which you may want to be a bull or a bear, I've given you prices, like ways to dis price discovery techniques for your weekly swing trades, right? That's what this is all about. Have I given you like a time that you should be at your desk, sober, ideally, fully focused on carrying out a, your, your trade plan? Is there a time that you everything in the world should stop for you to sit down at your charts? When is that time? Want to make sure I'm not making this up, right? Because if you don't, if you don't remember this stuff, then then it never happened, right? You're like Wayne, you've never told me this before. Yeah, I've covered it every week for ten years, right? Yeah, when the market's open for you, for me, Sunday afternoon, for you, might be Monday morning. But this is when you carry out your swing technique. You know the price in which you would consider buying or selling. And you know the time in which it'll probably offer itself to you. And that just happens, by the way, to be here, here, 
and here. Yeah, it didn't work out this week. Again, boo-hoo, too bad, so sad. Maybe you should have stayed in your trade. Okay? Okay? You see, guys? Right? I mean, you can carry it a little farther, too, because, you know, we've been bulls since the third week of August, so there's a buy zone. Right? There's a buy zone. Right? No. So that, that one didn't work, and that one didn't work. So this is sideways still. But you, you get it, right? Look. One, two, three, four, five times out of six, seven, eight. Okay? Five times out of the last eight week, you would have made lots of lots and lots of money. What do you stink? Yeah. Yeah, wealth trade. The only thing that messed it up this year was that the, the Trump election. That's it. It's really unfortunate, but it should still be a decent year. It should have been a lot decenter because these things would have set up or, you know, should have set up eight weeks earlier. But anyways. Anybody have any? Uh, an emotional response. So Miles says he messed up. Well, thank you for sharing, Miles. It, it takes brave bravery, right? You need to go on this planning retreat. You need to spend some time with yourself. Discover the the inner trader, right? Because I know you know your technical analysis. You know, I know you, you know that I know. I know that you know that I know that you know, which is common knowledge. It's common knowledge that I prepared you from the third week of August for an upward move on, on the end pairs. Now, I know it's complicated. I'm not saying it's perfect. But... I don't believe we ever sold a yen pair since August, right? Right? Since August, I don't think we even discussed selling a yen pair. Is that right? Only, only buying yen pairs. And if you remember in in um, typically, how about this? Typically, I did it this year, but I did it last year, and I did it the year before, and you know that kind of stuff, right? One of the things um, I've discussed, and in fact, it, it's a, it's a, it's an idea for a book. If I ever have a chance to write another book, uh, I have a couple of ideas, actually, two ideas for a book. One of them is uh, about never taking profit. And that it's that idea of position trading. And in 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 and and people that have been with me for years, and there are many people in this room that have been trading with me for years, know that you know, like July and August, I don't even try to make profit. I don't even attempt. If I'm up if I'm up 25 pips, I don't take the pips. I don't care. It's not. It's not enough money. It's not even worth my time. So what? What it's worth is the opportunity. And I try to set things up July and August for to catch moves like this in September, October, November. The idea is just literally don't take profit. I'll I'll, I'll break even on 200 trades, but 40 of them will stay open. I've had, and you guys know this, but I've had over a hundred trades open some years over a hundred trades open some years that's a lot of trades boy it was a good year yeah no but it's not me it's not me that's the whole thing 
I was just doing the right thing at the right time. Get in a trade, move the stop to break even. Get in another trade, move the stop to break even. Get in another trade, move the stop to break even. Get in another trade, move the stop to break even. Right, and then break even, break even, break even. Get another trade, move that to break even. And I'm like, oh well, I, uh, three trades survived. Grab another trade, move it to break even. Grab another trade. And all of a sudden you go boom, 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 boom. And again, if it wasn't for this election, imagine you had 30 trades open, and all of a sudden boom, 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 and it's going up and up and up and up. Right. That's how you make a lot of money in trading. And what most people, most retail traders are actually taught doesn't actually make a lot of money. If you if you do the math, you'll find out that there's no way it'll ever make a lot of money. These little wins of 25 and 50 pips, right? You see a lot of experts like, man, I make over 27 pips a day on average. Like, so what is that? How much money do you make? Right? What's 27 pips on a standard lot? Two hundred seventy bucks. I'm like, well, where the hell do you live? Three hundred dollars a day. Where do you live? Right. I mean, like, oh my God, like you can't live on three hundred bucks a day in America. You'd be on welfare or something, right? I don't know. Like seriously, I don't. I don't. Three hundred bucks a day. What? I mean, it, it, there's. And you're bragging about this? No, all right, so this high roller, this baller driving around in his Ferrari, I'm like, okay, you make 27 pips a day, you drive a $300,000 car, so you're either lying to somebody or you have, you make 27 pips a day and you're trading, what, five standard lots, 10 standard lots? You're like, you're the biggest trader at your broker? I mean, it's just like, I don't buy it. I just don't get it. There's just no way that that's true. You know what I mean? It's just no way. It's just, it's, it, it, it's a fallacy. It's, they're selling it some sort of dream. Does that, I mean, when you think about it that way, and by the way, what happens when you're wrong? Cause you know that, right? When they're wrong, all of a sudden they can't pay for that little Ferrari, right? So how do they do it? Well, sell you a DVD. Right? So so anyways, the way you make money is you let your winners run and you add another one and 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 another one, another one right? And you let them run and and you know, and that's good. Now, sometimes, you I mean, you can't have all big winners, so you need different strategies for different times of year. But, you know, the way you do it is you have a lot of winners and you let those winners run. Well, you're going to need to know fundamentals and you're going to need technicals. And you're going to need to be realistic, right? You shouldn't have 500 bucks in your account and trading full standard lot sizes. Right? I mean, just... You need to increase your trading account, lower your leverage, take your time, have a long-term plan. So like my first business planning retreat, right? I did two years worth of perform a cash flow statements month by month, actually day by day, organized by week and then month. Okay. And it changed a lot for me. I'm, I'm probably everything changed for me when I did that. Um, Emotionally, and uh, I mean, this idea that I had a long-term vision for my trading and not just like sit down and every day I'm trying to make as many pips as I possibly can, um, it gave me a long-term vision. I mean, it really changed things spiritually where I realized as long as I hit my averages, I'm going to have good days, I'm going to have bad days. But as long as they're not crazy bad, as long as they're kind of just like, ordinary I know at the end of two years I'll have a ton of money and I know it it's just like I know it it's there it's the math my account size will grow my lot size will grow and as long as I'm just kind of on path for average 
I know at the end of two years I'll have it. Okay. It's sort of like um, people that, um, you know, they sign up to take karate. And the first question is, how long until I get my black belt? A true karate master would say, no, you're never going to get your black belt. Well, I'll, I'll pay you, uh, I'll pay you a thousand bucks. How fast? Can I do it faster? I mean, they don't understand just the question right off the bat means you'll never be a black belt. You'll never be a master if you're trying to get through it quick. What's the easy? Is there an easier way? How do I do that? I'd like it to be easier, please. Can I just buy the black belt from you? I'll give you 10,000 bucks. Just give me the belt. I'll be a black belt. No, you'll be an idiot with a black belt that cost you 10,000 bucks and means nothing. Right? Yeah, wax on and wax off, right? So no, no, no. You need to enjoy that sort of plateau. You need to – but having the – Having the long-term vision and, of course, the, you know, doing the, the spreadsheets really helped that I knew that there wasn't any stress. There wasn't any pressure anymore to perform day and day and day in and day out, day in and day out, 12 hours a day trading and this constant pressure. I mean, it was crazy. I mean, I'm telling you, um, it, it does things to your body and your mind. And I mean, it's bad, man. So having a long-term plan and knowing the outcome, knowing how the future will progress in a way that I like, removing the pressure to perform, but just knowing that as long as I stay on path, stay average, as long as I don't have any big drawdowns, I'll be fine. The winning days will pay for the losing days, but where I make my money is just doing my job and staying the course. Staying focused and calm, not not revenge trading, not adding leverage, not over trading, just doing my job, spending time doing the analysis. And that's really at that time, that's when I, I started doing things like, you know, reading central bank websites and just saying, wow, this stuff seems really interesting and important. I don't know what any of it means, but I'm enjoying the process. But I think if you enjoy the process and have a long-term vision based on a plan and analysis that you've done, the change you have spiritually or even physically, because there's negativity physically based on stress. So if you can remove the stress, you're going to change the, the physics, the physicality of your body. Right? It changes things. I remember uh, I used to mentor salespeople, and uh, there used to be a, a situation where, um, um, and, and I'd tell the people in the car on, on the way, I'm like, okay, watch this. I'm going to control what the other person does. And they won't even know. They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, okay, well, we're going to get to the contract, and I'm going to push the contract in front of me. I'm not going to even say a word. They're going to lean forward in their chair. Okay. And then I'm going to say a few words. And the words will be, envision if you will. Okay? And they will sit back. They will sit back in the chair. I will make them move forward, and then I will make them move back new, using nothing but my words. And I say, and it's important here because, uh, you know, we're, we're doing things – based on emotions and chemicals and um, psychology. There's a lot going on that controls the physics, but also the physics, the, by physics, I mean your actual body, but, but that in turn controls hormones and adrenaline and other things. So like when you lean forward, you're crunching your stomach, you're pushing on, um, your stomach muscles are pushing on your spine, it's sending sensations up, up your back. You're, you're actually protecting yourself in, in like a, a fight or flight type scenario. And, you know, they see a contract. They're thinking, all right, this is when I'm supposed to get serious. And then they think of emotionally like, oh, I need to maintain control. I'm the boss here. And, oh, if I sign that contract, I might get into trouble. My, my boss or my colleagues might think I'm stupid. And 
what if they're going to take advantage of me? I, you know, there's, this is risky. This is bad. And all this is going on. So you might as well not even talk anymore because it's all going on in their brain and they're sitting forward. And all I did was put the contract on the table. And then I would tell the story. And they would sit back in their chair and their stomach muscles would relax. They would calm down. They would listen to the story. And I would imprint a picture in their mind to clarify all that, to remove all that negativity that they went through when they saw the contract. Your mind is incredibly important, guys. And it creates the emotions. And, and, and emotions create physical changes, if you will, physical and chemical changes. So when you don't have a plan and you're not doing well as a trader, it creates emotions and, and, and probably negative emotions that are not helpful. You don't feel good spiritually, whatever that means to you, but you also start to break down physically, right? Because of the, the tenseness in your muscles, the stress and the adrenaline um, and the inevitable rigor mortis, it's all going to set in. And it's simply because you lack control and vision. And there's no way under circumstances like that, that you're going to be consistently profitable because you lack control and you can't have any control if you don't know what you're doing or where you're going or why you're doing it. So I would challenge you by the end of the year, you should have a business planning retreat like any other business person or association would do. It would be a normal thing to have a business plan for 2017 at the beginning of 2017. And I think, uh, I think you'll be just shocked how it will change everything for you physically, mentally, spiritually, but <laughs> profitably. Huh? So, uh, I love you, babe, but I got to jump things to do A's to a is to score. So, hey, uh, peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May our profits be above average. Thank you for being a client of Trader's Way. Uh, we appreciate you, and we want the best for you. We want you to succeed so we can be partners for years and years and years to come. So uh, no webinar tomorrow. Where's the camera? Weird. Okay. No webinar tomorrow. I'm going to be on a jet plane flying down to the Caribbean. I know. I know. I know. Somebody's got to do it. So, uh, but I will be on the beach writing a paper. <laughs> I have to finish my paper. You know what it's called? Wayne Economics. Yeah, baby. Libertarian capitalist pig dog system that cares for the lowest common denominator and provides through the just and legal redistribution of resources for the lowest common denominator through better education and health care, but most importantly, the, the culture of entrepreneurialism that focuses on the individual and doesn't just give the opportunity but the right for all to create and share and make the society a better place through their entrepreneurial endeavors. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. So, hey, take care of yourself here. I'll see you on Wednesday from uh, from the beach and uh, be careful there's sharks in the water huh? see you soon guys take care zoop, 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 zoop. Zoop, zoop. there it is goodbye boom <laughs>